the I'm extent start of start my- drinking more hardcore orange wine, even more than I actually do. It, like, like on a, <laughs> not in one sitting is what not I meant. back another episode of wine 01 this time we're not doing a grape varietal we're not doing what's a som we're talking about dietary stuff and what's in wine and what do consumers need to be aware of and also what do winemakers need to be telling the consumers about so i think the first thing i'll start out with is the other day you sent to our work group chat a winemaker is currently getting recalled because they didn't put something on their label. So what are the things that as a winemaker, you need to have on your label to inform people that's going to be in there? Uh, look, it's pretty simple and it's and it's not uh, incredibly, let's say the regulations aren't, you know, really, really, really stringent. Uh, obvious things, uh, volume, uh, people need to know how much they're consuming. How much liquid? How much liquid? Yep. 750 mil, for example. Okay. Uh, alcohol, they need to know how much alcohol is in it. Uh, and so obviously like 14.5%, 15%, 13%, for example. Um, a Quite often most countries will include some form of what we call standard drinks, which is a way of simplifying and understanding the yep. relationship between a- ABV, alcohol, and the volume itself. Yep. Um, and then you've got a few other things. So processing aids, um, which have uh, allergen-related uh, things. So that, that could be uh, egg-based things, animal-based products. Uh, in particular, uh, and sulfites probably being the the predominant one that most people are familiar with when it comes to and, and this particular winery that you reference actually just uh, it would have been a, a very honest and simple but unfortunately very costly mistake where they forgot to include may contain sulfites or right. contain sulfites on the label, and that whole that whole batch has to be recalled and relabeled. A very very expensive process. It is quite unfortunate. Uh, so you are required to say if there are like for people who are vegetarian or vegan out there, you are required to say if there are animal products involved in your wine. You are if they're uh, yeah processed with an animal products. Yeah, absolutely. And there is a list. There's a specifically defined list of additives that must be stated on the label. But they uh, there, there's a, been a, a lot of pressure to move away from those uh, recently. What animal products are in wine? There's a lot of um, fining agents mostly, so a lot of milk products, um, fish, fish is used as a fining agent, um, egg, egg as well. Um, um, and it's also, the fact is that unfortunately in the winemaking process, you can't get away from it, animals die. It just It's just like small insects and stuff like that. In vineyards and- They yeah, do yeah, die. Harvest and- Yeah, it's stuff like that. Unfortunately, that, that does happen. Um, and but- the odd seller hand also. Well, yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. luckily that doesn't end up in the product. No. Um, blood, sweat and beers uh, <laughs> certainly do. And coffee. Yeah. <laughs> coffee. Coffee. Man, coffee. Yes. Coffee. Infinite coffee. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like it's more about the a- additives into the, the wine itself is that the argument can be made that wine could never be vegan, but it's more about adding stuff in to make it not vegan. Yeah. Fair enough. So, And usually it comes as a, a, a consequence of what we call larger batch processing so when if, when you want to make a lot of wine really quickly and you don't have a choice because you know lots of grapes are coming in very very quickly as well that all sort of ripens at the same time um they've developed a suite of uh winemaking tools that you can add to a wine uh to fix maybe having too high phenolics uh, which is generally actually the case so things like casein Fining or casing milk, casing protein fining, mm-hmm. uh, or Isenglass, which is um, derived from, I believe, the, I, I want to, don't paraphrase me, I believe it's the gut of a sturgeon um, fish, uh, type of fish. There was a, um, <laughs> there was a metal band or a, a member of a metal band who made wine and found out that his wine was vegan and he was like you know what fuck it i'm gonna find it with fish guts that's sick <laughs> <laughs> just, make sure wine just so vegan. it's so metal yeah, uh and you've got also i mean yeah egg whites bull's <sighs> blood is has been something that used to be utilized and is not utilized anymore um but more that's protein enough. they're all protein based things and they're all usually because something has been put into the wine by the winemaker through um uh ignorance perhaps it's just just uh they're too busy uh and they can't get around to it uh, and they don't pay attention close enough and it's just 
we've developed this suite of tools that allows you to fix it at a later date before hitting, you know, in going into the bottle. Um, yeah. yeah, right. Um, what about other common allergens? Like, are there ever, you know, are there ever traces of nuts? Like gluten? Is that like, are you ever gonna, uh, or even? So you were saying that you use milk sometimes as a fining agent. Yeah. Is that going to trigger people who are lactose intolerant? It could do. Uh, I, I imagine uh, Kate. I, I'm not too sure casein as a protein. I don't have, think has anything to do with lactose as a sugar. Um, I think yeah, I, 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 you'd be hard pressed to to yeah. get um, lactone issues uh, in with with milk as a fining agent. Um, but you definitely have to say may contain traces of. I think. Yeah, I don't think there's any sort of guarantee as well. There could be hypersensitive people and stuff. And there's a reason why there's rules around this. In terms of nut allergies, I'm not aware of anything really in terms of nuts. That could be added. The only thing that I'm actually aware of would be tannin, um, chestnut yep. tannin. Okay. Uh, that's utilized, yeah, but I'm not too sure as to like the allergens surrounding chestnut. I see. It's mo like you know a lot of chestnut wood is used, yep. but not necessarily the nut itself. Yeah. So there's so a lot I'm not of sure. Um, yeah, uh, tannin additives. Histamines is a big one mm -hmm. uh, as well in wines. Um, and that's not actually uh, on the label or anything like that. That's just something that people need to know about themselves. Uh, gluten's, I don't think, ever been an issue uh, no. in regards to wine. I, I can't think for the life of me why anything uh, based around wheat flour would in end up general, in a, yeah. Um, or wheat germ, whatever, end up, yeah, okay. in, a, in a wine. What about uh, other, you know, quite often you'll hear people are doing like paleo diets or. Um, uh, keto diet as well. How does wine fit in with any of those sort of dietaries? Or diet? I guess in general, it's always moderation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it d depends on the goal. Uh, I think keto, keto. I've I've did a stint of keto myself for like six, eight months. Hey man, it shows. And uh, yeah, yeah, well, I put it all back on. So hey. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky D. <laughs> um, yeah. There's, I've had arguments actually with people who actually have supposed keto wine companies and they've they've not been too stoked about my particular views. And my, the view being that there's just no way uh, to really consume uh, wine on a regular basis when you're on a ketogenic diet. Okay. It does, it puts your body out of ketosis. Uh, ethanol, the alcohol does. Yep. It is temporary, but it does stop it. In mm -hmm. general, uh, and largely the the big thing around keto is actually sugar, um, and so uh, th most wines don't really have a lot of sugar in it. And so that's the other thing. So like there's a big trend at the moment. We saw it. We just went down to a bottle shop to pick up some wines for the show before, and we saw like no sugar wine and sugar free yeah. wine and wines. Dry wine is dry because there's no sugar in it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like there's no sugar. Uh, in fact, I, I, in the rule in Australia, I believe is less than two grams per liter is considered dry. Um, that's a very low amount of sugar. Okay. You'd be absorbing sugar through through other other means that are much higher than, than through wine. So, with keto, I don't necessarily believe that wine is compatible, um, and I probably get a lot of hatred for that. You can have it, but it'll stop ketosis. Uh, what are other big ones? V veganism. Well, we sort of like covered that briefly. Um, it does sort of depend on. That's a, I, I that's, a, that's a really, I guess... Um, if you start looking at things like insects in vineyards and stuff like that, I'm sure, you know, if you're growing an organic farm, there's going to be insects dying on your farm as well while you're growing your vegetables out there. Like, yeah, I think I think it's the, the living in a rule of absolutes that becomes yeah. a problem, isn't it? Like, yeah, exactly. It's like, uh, um, if you're... If you're as strict to the definition of veganism, you... There's a lot of things you can't really don't drive consume. a car. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of it's things. Basic things. Yeah, don't do drugs. All that kind of shit. Um, yeah. Don't smoke cigarettes. All that kind of thing. Like it's there is a long list of things that you can't really do if you're strict to the rule. So it's just like it's adding stuff. I think is the the real the real kicker. And what about uh, just in terms of like leading a healthy life? You know, I'm not looking for like, hey, don't drink two bottles of wine every night. But in terms of if I've decided that I want to lose weight, but I'm also not going to give up my uh, desire to have booze. In the past, if I've tried to lose weight, I've switched from drinking beers to drinking vodka. And that works really effectively because the amount of carbs, if I'm drinking vodka sodas versus drinking like mid-strength, full-strength, low-carb beer, it doesn't matter. There's still going to be more in beer. Where does wine fit on that? sort of spectrum in terms of how much how, like the calories the sugars the carbs generally speaking obviously each you know there's sugar-free wines out these days but 
What do you think? Uh, well, you just got my thoughts on that. Um, no, the... Obviously, when it comes to, to losing weight, it's about being in a caloric deficit. Yep. That's that's the, the main the main kit here. And is there calories in wine? There absolutely is. There's calories in alcohol. Uh, ethanol is processed uh, with, with a caloric figure. Um, you'll generally find that your, um, you know, vodka sodas and stuff, well, obviously, you're, you're mixing it with a no sugar mixer, yeah. which is great. Um, your calories that are being counted, uh, you know, towards your sort of daily intakes are really only attributed to ethanol. So there is no sugar um, that's in that. It's very similar with wine. But then you sort of start to, you know, they talk about alcohol being empty calories. Mm. So in general, if you're trying to lose weight, probably one of the easiest ways to do it is to just not drink, which, I mean, definitely doesn't serve me as owning a winery saying, you know, telling no, you not to drink. No. But if you were to make the case for it, out of all the alcohols, then you'd probably start leaning towards wine. Wine's probably best case is its pH. So um, you've probably heard of drinking apple cider vinegar. Yep, um, yep. It helps basically uh, make uh, your um, stomach a little bit more acidic. Okay. It helps break down food quicker so you can actually access a lot of the, the micronutrients that are inside your food and actually breaks it down a lot quicker. Um, and so of all the alcohols that you could possibly consume, the one that is actually the most acidic, all by you know, ignoring the, the, um, the wacko stuff, mm. is really wine sitting at, you know, high twos to high three ph when you look at something like beer you're looking at four to five uh to six in some cases and when you look at vodka you're looking at more neutral phs so you are when you're consuming things like vodka sodas or vodka lime and sodas you are consuming largely empty calories but an argument could be made for wine particularly wine of a natural bent i think uh, when it comes to things like consuming yeast and uh things that you know it's it's like having natural pot set yogurt plays you know, yo play or fruit or, yep. you know, heavily sort of sugared, jacked up stuff. So um, every glass of wine, I mean, I typically overestimate if, if you are counting calories, a glass of wine, I, I, I just jump straight to like 110, 120 calories. It's about an apple. It's about an apple. Yeah. Uh, and you can factor it in. Uh, when I've been dieting, I, I just factor it in a couple of glasses a day. Um, then you've got your other big elements. Um, uh, what helps you satiate your hunger? So if you are trying to put yourself at a caloric deficit, what is actually helping you feel full? Yeah. Uh, wine certainly a really good, good aspect to that. Um, you know, typically when you're starting to, to look towards things like even carbonated wine uh, can mm. certainly help and allow you to be able to graduate to things like sparkling water and um, or mixing up apple cider vinegar and sparkling water because it sits at a very similar pH. So it's actually like you can have your two glasses and then you could roll to something like that and not feel like. You're you not, need to yeah. have another alcoholic mm. drink or anything like that. It actually works really well. Yeah. Hard to do if you're doing it from beer. You just feel like, oh, this is just painful. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a big change up. Yeah. Um, I think my main problem is that like once I've had a couple of glasses of wine, I usually want to have something nice to eat afterwards as well. Yeah, is- it's like I yeah, that's the thing you're saying, like having a glass of wine makes you not hungry. I'm like, okay, I'm hungry now after I, I just ate <laughs> four rolls of sushi and now I've had half a glass of wine. It's like feel a bit snacky yeah <laughs> well i suppose timing us timing is probably a really good thing to touch on is is don't drink before drink during and after yeah mm. um that's probably really a good point yeah because uh, if you drink before you're you're probably going to make you know you lower your inhibitions you're probably going to end up making some really poor choices when it comes to hey it's all going to well to have a salad but when you're dowsing in that much oil yeah yeah probably yeah. going to be ki- hitting those calorie numbers pretty easily who knows? Well, look, that's an interesting one. I hadn't really, because I haven't really been on any strict um, diets, either in terms of like, I don't have any allergens and I've never really delved into the word, world of keto or veganism. I've never really considered where wine would fit on that well, spectrum. Well, what about Mediterranean diets? Maybe you heard about this, This, you know, the Mediterranean, um, I'm not sure what is like the phenomena about- Is that um, the one about eating just stuff that comes from this like seafood and things like that well, predominantly? Naturally, they do have, you know, a more seafood uh, mm. rich diet, but they also have a diet rich in like pastries and, you know, there's a lot of, lot of gluten. Right. Um, you know, so, bread, pasta, yeah, a lot of carbs, <laughs> high carbs, but they also have a lot of wine. And um, on average, they're known as having some of the lowest rates of heart disease um, and living, uh, you know, quite quite a long time out. Yeah, I think, I think Italy is like top three. Yeah. Longest living countries in, like, yeah, in the yeah. world. It's crazy. 
and it's and they reckon it's because of a chemical inside, particularly red wine mm-hmm. and skin contact white wines, uh, called resveratrol, which is an antioxidant. You always you probably might have heard that red wines have antioxidants. I've heard that. Much like drinking lots of tea, um, uh, antioxidants plus having something in your stomach that is such a low pH helps you be able to to handle higher carb and higher fat dense foods. So there is there is I suppose a degree of pseudoscience that has or is trying to understand and trying to talk to the degree that you can actually get grape derived resveratrol pills um, that you can take on a daily as basis. A supplement sort of as a, as an antioxidant supplement. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Yeah. If you got, I, I'm out of questions about wine <laughs> dieting. Like, have you got anything you'd like to add? Because honestly, we've reached the I'm extent of start my- drinking more hardcore orange wine, even more than I actually do. And like, like on a, <laughs> not in one sitting is what not I meant. Not in one sitting, responsibly, of course. Well, there, there's there's actually been a, a really interesting study done uh, in the UK, uh, which I'd love to. I'd need to try to find it so we can link it below later. But it actually talks about um, uh, alcohol consumption. Uh, mapped over years of life and certainly um, if you uh, don't consume alcohol and you're comparing it to someone that's drinking large quantities of alcohol particularly wine um, there is a disparity certainly the person that's not drinking doesn't actually experience a lot of the health and social uh, impacts that that drinking large quantities of alcohol on a daily basis will, will, will occur but there is actually a uh, a point on the curve where a moderate amount of alcohol um, people are actually outliving people that have no alcohol in their lives but then it drops down yeah so it does actually pick up and then it drops down after a period of time but it was a really interesting piece of research it was um i forget forgive me i forget the word but it's uh not a clinical study but it's where they grab all like it's a study of studies so they grab all the different studies they put them together in one uh and they quantify all of those figures so you know where each one's like this is a study of a thousand people a study of like twenty thousand yeah. people a study of like fifty thousand people like well we're gonna grab basically one that will count for a study of a million Right, and we're gonna uh, have a look at that. So it is there are changing norms, uh, I think, um, around conceptualizing wine intake. Yep, and also people are wondering why we we consume alcohol. Like that's the other thing is like there's just the imposition that when you go out you're gonna have an alcoholic drink. Yeah, I think more people these days are actually going. Well, why do I even why do I even drink in the first place? Is it to belong to a crowd, uh, or is it to feel a feeling? Is it to you know, and what's right and what's wrong within that. Mm. What we do know is that wine has been around for far longer than most other alcoholic beverages. This is true. Um, and it seems to have, have survived many, many millennia um, to coexist with, you know, our daily diets yeah. pretty well. Well, drink more wine. It's good for you, is I think my <laughs> takeaway from it. <laughs> oh, too in, long. In moderate too, control. Too man. long, don't read. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, TLDR. Yeah. Wine's good for you, especially the red stuff from the Mediterranean. Um, don't forget orange wine. Yeah, don't forget orange wine. Uh, forget. That's fascinating. I mean, I'm going to continue to drink and not to lose a lot of weight, I don't think, because I'm going to continue to make bad choices. But that's some really good information <laughs> for anyone out there with self-will. Uh, self power? Self- self- I don't know, man. You're telling the story. Yeah, not very well. <laughs> Self-control. <laughs> Self-control. Thank you very much, Noah. Uh, 101 for another week. Brendan, Noah, Lockie behind the camera. Catch you next time, guys.